This year's FIFA World Cup 2022 is being held in Qatar, and as well as being well known because of its massive fan base, it has also been the subject of countless controversies and issues that have erupted. For those of you who are not aware, Qatar has managed it exceptionally well. For those of you who are unaware of it, it is the most expensive football World Cup ever held. In doing so, Qatar has made the unthinkable happen. So what are the details, the costs, and what is in store for Qatar after this World Cup? The most expensive World Cup in history and the most popular sports event to take place in the Middle East, the 2022 FIFA Football World Cup, began on Sunday with Qatar hosting Ecuador. Qatar's preparation for the World Cup, which has been plagued by controversies and criticism from the beginning, has cost considerably more than $200 billion. Previously, Russia paid close to $14 billion for the event, which was considered to be the most expensive addition to date. A strong footballing culture and facilities were present in past event hosts, which Qatar did not. In order to meet the demands of one of the most watched professional tournaments in the world, the nation went above and beyond. Over $250 billion has been spent on the football tournament's infrastructure since Qatar won the bid to host the World Cup in 2010. China invested $42 billion in 2008 Beijing Olympics and Russia committed $55 billion to 2014. Funding for eight soccer stadiums was $10 billion. With the remainder, the nation was completely overhauled, including the construction of a new metropolis and 100 new hotels, an upgraded airport and port, rebuilt roads, and several metro lines. There is a possibility that the one-month competition will surpass FIFA's $5.4 billion earnings from the 2018 World Cup in Russia. According to reports, FIFA has already sold around 3 million tickets, 240,000 hospitality packages, as well as broadcast rights for the World Cup. Coca-Cola and Adidas AG are among the sponsors. As a nation with fewer than 3 million inhabitants, it is not surprising that the sports premier competition has been organized heavily in the past 10 years. In Qatar, 1.2 million fans are expected to attend the event, however, while many may stay in neighboring countries, accommodations have proven difficult for the organizers. It was reported by FIFA that 3 million tickets, or all the seats, had already been sold by the middle of October. Saudi Arabians and United Arab Emirates citizens, among others, were among the top buyers. The United States, Britain, Mexico, France, Brazil, Germany, and Argentina are also among the countries that bought the most tickets and attended matches at Qatar's billion-dollar stadiums. Unfortunately, supporters from China were barred by COVID regulations. Qatar's neighbors also benefit from this situation. Nearly 40 regular flights into Qatar will come from the United Arab Emirates, and Dubai, 45 minutes from Doha, will be the tournament's primary entry point. Tourism from the FIFA World Cup will also benefit Oman and Saudi Arabia. To serve on World Cup infrastructure, a large migrant labor force came from countries such as Bangladesh, India, and Nepal. In order to obtain contracts in Qatar, where they were promised well-paying employment and favorable working conditions, those individuals were forced to pay fees of around $4,000. As part of the decade-long World Cup infrastructure project in Qatar, Workers reported poor wages of $1 per hour spanning 12-hour shifts, particularly during hot summers. After international criticism, Qatar implemented a minimum wage of 1,000 rials, $275, per month. So, eventually, the World Cup must end. What will happen to these stadiums? Qatari officials believe that the infrastructure built as part of Qatar's World Cup efforts will contribute to Qatar's non-energy economy even if there is no concrete strategy for what should happen with those gleaming football venues. LNG may be in high demand currently, but Europe ultimately wants to stop using fossil fuels. Media portrayals of Qatar may attract tourists and businesses. Ports and highways may boost industry. Several analysts predict that non-energy economic activity will slow following the World Cup. The hotel industry expects thousands of additional rooms in 2023 some of which were meant for the World Cup but weren't completed. On top of that, there will be many more residential properties. As building projects slow down, Qatar's government anticipates that low-wage workers will leave, but it is unclear how many other workers, particularly white-collar ones, will leave Qatar as well. During the year ending October 31, Qatar reached an unprecedented 3 million people. Also, after the fans go home, the nation could be lonely again. 
Upon the conclusion of the World Cup, the government anticipates a more enduring knowledge and service based economy. Therefore, it is uncertain how a significant sports tournament will lead to economic growth. The post tournament transformation is just as important as the preparation if the investment is expected to pay off in the long run. Qatar is guaranteed to experience a game changer at this year's FIFA World Cup. It is expected that even after so many controversies, the country will still thrive and generate a huge amount of revenue. It and this mega project are also expected to boost the country's tourism sector. FIFA World Cup 2022 will also demonstrate to the world that countries outside of South America and Europe are also capable of hosting major tournaments. Are other African or Asian countries going to get hosting rights in the future? Or will American and European countries host such mega events again? Here's the end of this video. We hope you enjoyed watching it and found it to be interesting. If you did, then please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon to never miss an update. Let us know your thoughts on Qatar hosting the 2022 World Cup in the comments section. We will be back with more videos like these soon. Until next time.